Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto for GrowMyBag.tv. I hope you're having a good one. I could not possibly get the 16 points that I have in news in the in the crypto minute this morning. I almost had to turn it into a crypto couple of minutes. But let's get started here. Everybody's pointing to crypto. Whenever somebody's account gets hacked on X, it's to promote crypto. This latest attack was on Sydney Sweeney, and it promoted a crypto that then earned $13 million in less than an hour, and then the coin disappeared. Now, that's not my problem. My issue is the lack of security on X. Like, seriously, stop and think about that. So it used to be that they made sure that you had, you know, you know, multi-factor authentication and all that good stuff. If you don't pay, you don't get multi-factor authentication. So let me get this straight. You need my content, you know, us. When I say my, I mean us. You need our content to keep your platform going and you scale back the, the amount of security there is. That was a problem. That was a big problem. Then, then, and I said this a long time ago, when it first happened, I was talking about it. And now it seems like every week there's a new hack. And they say, oh, it's because of, it's because of crypto. No, it's not because of crypto. It's because X is so easy to hack, apparently. That's the problem. That is the problem. If X wasn't so easy to hack, you wouldn't have people losing, in aggregate, $13 million off this one thing in an hour. By the way, not for nothing, got to give a hat tip to Sydney Sweeney for being so popular. $13 million in one hour. One. Because somebody's account was hacked. And I'm just sitting here and I'm saying to myself, you know, when when are people going to stop and say, you know what, you know what, X, if you don't get your stuff straight, just not going to put anything on there because I, I'm going to make it an inactive account just because, well, how can I trust anything? How can I trust? It? Imagine, imagine if somebody like Eric Balkunis's account got hacked. Or somebody else who's a famous, you know, technical analyst accounts get hacked. Imagine the ramifications. That's not a crypto problem. That's an X security problem. And if somebody says to me, well, you know, you got to pay for that security. I shouldn't have to pay for security. It's your platform. It's your platform. See, what you're saying is by action. What you're saying is some accounts will be secure and everybody else will be insecure, which leads to I can't trust your platform unless everybody has a blue check mark. Is that what you're saying? So what kind of platform is that? I mean, there comes a point where I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not upset that you know, you want to charge people to be on the platform. I'm not, that's not, I'm not upset about that. That used to be, I don't care now. I kind of, I get it. But I would make it so that, well, then everybody gets a blue check mark because everybody has to pay so that the whole platform can be secure. But $13 million in one hour before the coin collapsed, That's an economic problem, and it's not the first time. That means collectively, $13 million, those people, poof. Poof. The coin is probably worth nothing now. I'm just sitting back, and I'm just wondering, when is somebody actually going to start calling them out on the carpet for that? Right? Fix it. It can be fixed. Fix it. I mean, it used to be that what you heard was, 
you know, a phishing, a phishing attack happened to somebody and their account was compromised. But this is hacking. So was it phishing? Was it hacking? I don't know. I don't, here's, a, here's a really good one. I'm wondering if they've already got a list of stars out there that have already been hacked. They just haven't been used yet. Just saying, it, it's, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. And it's, it's not about crypto. It's about X. To a lot of people that use X, a lot of people are starting to go, well, you know, what's the point of being here? I mean, having your having the fear of getting your account hacked on X is like being on TikTok and having 50 million people, you know, pretend they're you, counterfeit accounts. So, yeah, no, nah, that's, that's not a good thing. There is an analyst in another note, and there is an analyst that's saying adding Shiba Inu to your portfolio would help to diversify your portfolio, given that Coinbase is about to offer Shiba Inu futures. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody that's sleeping on Shiba Inu, I mean, I described it the other day. You know, Shiba Inu's got a whole ecosystem. Build dApps, games, you know, metaverse space, usage. There's a company, a publicly traded company the other day that just said, yeah, we're going to accept Shiba Inu as payment. So I'm just sitting back and I'm saying, Shiba Inu used to be a meme. It's not a meme anymore. Don't put it in that category. I really, I really don't, I really disagree with that. Then we have um, ASI launched. Um, I think it's still called FET. I think the, I think the coin is still FET. They're waiting. I think the, the next step is to move from FET to ASI, but the name Fetch is done. Now it's artif- artificial super intelligence ASI, super intelligence alliance, technically. Um, <clears throat> and it's surpassed market cap of render. That's pretty interesting. It's now ranked on CMC as number 27. I don't think everything's been calculated just yet. Not, not all the numbers have been calculated yet. So I'm going to give it a little while because when I when you put together the market cap of Singularity, Ocean and Fetch, it was like seven bill, six, somewhere between six and seven point five billion. So it should have ranked higher, in my humble opinion. But we'll see how that we'll see how it all turns out when when all the dust settles. Polkadot is in trouble. Polkadot's in trouble. And the reason why I say so is because Polkadot is yesterday I reported that Polkadot was facing money problems. Right? They it was it was released that they only have two years left of money. And they came out and you know dissuaged that and they were kind of like, hey, no, we're fine, we know everything is all right with the money. But now they're facing discrimination charges that they don't treat their Asian developers properly. That's gonna be a problem for a lot of people. That's going to be a problem for a lot of people because um, that's not cool. If that's true, that's not cool. So now they're they're fighting two fights. Hey, we're not going broke and hey, we're not racist. That's a horrible position to be in. A horrible position to be in. I'm just saying. Then in terms of security, we have another security breach. Evolve Bank and Trust involved as well they've got a security breach tons of information out there it affects 150 over 155,000 accounts last number sold 155,500 accounts exposing 33 terabytes of user data what How, how did it happen how did it happen that's what people are going to be asking how did that happen so that's ugly. Here's something else that's really cool, though. Institutional investors are snatching up Chainlink. They're snatching it up like it's the last meal. Like, wow. $30 million in Chainlink over the past X amount of time. That's a lot. By institutional investors, that's a lot. A heck of a lot. Then on top of that, on top of that, 
get down to the story because it's it's buried. Um, Fidelity, Signum Bank, and Chainlink are collaborating to integrate net asset value data on chain. Wow. Remember when I told you that Chainlink is a part of the connective tissue that I'm, I, I just love connective tissue in a space. Chainlink is that. And Chainlink is constantly out there saying, we're probably going to be the best. They try not to say that, but their actions, <laughs> their actions though, kind of say we're the best Oracle out there. I don't care about anybody else's speed. I care about the amount of secure amount of not me personally, but I'm saying they they're like, we don't care about everybody else's speed. We have the most data. We can do the most linking. We can get faster, but acquiring that data. Ooh. And then you have to think about it with the amount of data that they have access to. They're probably the easiest chain to work with when it comes to tokenization. So I'm expecting that space to grow for them which is why I hold a nice bag of chain link. And I'm willing to bet that not a lot of people are in on this yet. I mean, don't get me wrong. Everybody knows about chain link, but I don't think they're in on all this news yet. And so right now for me, yeah, right now is a good time to buy. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Um, Goldman Sachs is predicting a market correction and I'm kind of, I'm sitting here and I'm kind of going, well, the market touched, you know, in the 60s today this morning so i'm thinking it could have it could have hit and we'll look at the numbers again in a little bit but i think it could have hit like in a 59 59 range depending on you know what depends on what kind of sorry we're saying goodbye to my son um it really depends on what exchange you're on or what exchanges data you're looking at to see what you know what the impact actually is right and i'm thinking that chain link is just going to freaking explode something else that i'm paying attention to i'm paying attention to a lot of things but 16 points of news today just that's a lot for a single day a lot the day before a united states national holiday an important one that's big um but yeah goldman sachs is kind of like yeah there, there could be a market correction and i'm sitting back and i'm going yeah could be could be before an explosion up. Like everybody keeps talking about, oh, you know, the market, you know, the crypto markets hit its top, it's hit its top, it's hit its top. And I'm sitting back and I'm going, no, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. There are just too many things pointing toward a grander upside. There's far too many things pointing toward a grander upside. So I don't know how a prolonged market correction could happen. We're already experiencing a market correction, right? We were at 73, 750 and dropped all the way down into the 50s. Right? That's like a what? $15,000 drop? A one sixth drop? One sixth? Yeah. So just saying, that's that's not easy. That's not easy at all. So I'm sitting back and I'm just saying to myself, you know, yeah, yeah, we're probably already in it. But that downward pressure from Germany selling, from the U.S. selling, but others are still buying, that's going to decrease and the market's going to go up. It's going to march up. That's my opinion. That's what I see. Right. If Germany wasn't selling so much, United States didn't pile on. Numbers would be up. Oh, no doubt. Binance.us is definitely preparing for their court case against the SEC. They tried to get it thrown out. Not being thrown out. It's going to move forward. Period. Again, I don't have anything on Binance.us anymore. I didn't close my account, but I don't have anything in there just in case. So take the hint. Just saying, take the hint. Um, Cardano's chain fork. I reported yesterday, last night, if you were listening to the live, you should really hop on the live, the live events that I have. It's between, um, everything I'm talking about. I have it every night or every week night at 8 PM. 
at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, let me tell you something. We get into it. We get into it. There are people out there that do as much research as I do. So imagine a whole bunch of people that do research on different things, sharing that information as a pool. That's what Grow My Bag is all about. One ship rises, all ships rise. That's the whole idea. Let's learn together. Let's grow together. Let's become wiser together. So last night, I was talking about how Cardano used to be the number one platform for development. It is now number five. Now, hold on before you say anything. That's because, you know, there was a pullback, right? There's a pullback because there's the Chang fork coming on. So everybody pull back a bit, wait for the Chang fork, and then proceed. Makes sense. That's not the surprising part. The surprising part to me was the new number one and the new number two. The new number one is Hedera Hashgraph. Didn't see that coming. Wow. Who's number two? Chainlink. Chainlink is number two. And I have to tell you, I only I, I really do think they're going to continue growing. Having access, having literally that link between real world and digital world, having that link, that's no joke. That is no joke. You're not going to get that anyplace else. The amount of data that's there, you're just not going to find that anyplace else. Not yet. Not for a long time coming with all the deals that Chainlink is cutting. So there's a lot of reason why why those institutions are buying up Chainlink. There's a lot of reasons. Because if institutions are buying, why would they be buying? Most likely because they're also going to be using. Just saying. That deal between Swift and Chainlink, probably one of the most fruitful deals that they could have come up with. And then CCIP, woof. Chainlink is about to explode. I really do think Chainlink is about to explode. I need a bigger bag. Like in Jaws, I think you're going to need a bigger boat. I think I need a bigger bag. BitTensor blockchain halted after an $8 million attack on user wallets. When they say that there was an attack and they put a number on it, that's the money that was lost. That's the money that was lost. And they had to stop. That's... That's a little bit more of a problem, a little bit more than a problem. DraftKings is in trouble. Why? A judge denies a dismissal, mo- a dismissal motion in a class action lawsuit against DraftKings. And that also means that that court case is going to decide whether or not their NFTs are securities. See what I mean? So it's bigger than just, oh, DraftKings is getting taken to court. Nah. Are NFTs securities? Yeah, I could easily see how NFTs are securities. I don't even know if that's a real question, but it is. Gala Games and Animoca Brands. Animoca, the Animoca Brands that's thinking about going IPO in Hong Kong or Singapore. That one. They've collaborated to see if they can boost the, the, the value of of uh, the Gala token. That's a big deal. Two big gaming houses merging like that, not merging, but working together like that, collaborating to create something to boost Gala games. I'll be paying attention to that because I'm telling you, the gaming space in Web3 Web is going to be huge. Don't believe me? Go take a look at Notcoin. Go take a look at Tonguecoin. Go take a look at Hamster Combat. Go take a look at some of these coins that are based on gaming. Yeah, the Shiba Inu ecosystem as well. Go take a look. Go take a look. TapSwap is another one. I'm telling you that gaming space is going to be big. I think it's going to be bigger than it once was. Right? Now, Mantra Chain... Never heard of it. This is the first time I'm hearing about it. 
But yeah, I'm going to pay attention to a chain that's saying they're going to tokenize over half a billion dollars in real in real assets in real estates, real estate in Dubai. That to me is huge. You're going to tokenize five hundred million dollars worth of real estate assets in Dubai. I am dying to see what kind of trading happens with that. I think that that could be really big. And it, and they're going to be offering yields through stable coins and OM tokens. Wow. Wow. So when I sit back and I look at all of this and somebody says, you know, crypto's hit the high for this run. All of that makes me crack up. Like where are you getting your data? What are you seeing? How do you get there from here? You know what? Don't care. Keep telling, keep spreading FUD. Keep spreading FUD. Thank you. Because while it's being held down, being compressed downwardly right now, and I mean compressed, I don't mean pushed down and there's space, I mean it's being compressed. Again, there's only but so much you can compress a spring before it just takes off. Just saying, just saying. So that's what I'm expecting. There's a lot of pent up energy, a lot, a lot. But you know what we should do? That's right, we should get into the numbers. So I should refresh this. It's been a minute since I refreshed. Let's give it a sec. Because it's actually, it's actually going out, talking to an API, and they're going to come back with all the numbers. There you go. So on the downside, the whole list is down. Maker's down, was down the other day. Knockcoin is down, was down the other day. Bonk is down, down the other day. Ave, down. Pepe, down, eight. Um, who else am I paying attention to? Brett is down. Yeah, that's in an hour. Um, Brett is down 10%. Dog with hat down 10%. Looks like a lot of meme coins are down a lot. Um... Ethereum name service down 13%. That's because it was inflated a little bit. And now people decided to take big money off the table. BitTensor, again, down 14%. Pendle down 18%. Pendle's been taking it on the chin for a, for a while now. And, you know, I remember when Morgan told me about, about Pendle, I was like, wow, that seems very interesting. But for some reason, I didn't buy it. For some reason, I didn't buy it. And then I said, well, all right, whatever. And then I, you know, just kept looking, kept looking, kept looking. It's down a lot. It's down a lot. But you know what I do like about it? See that number right there? All-time high. They're off 47% off their all-time high. And I'm like, huh. Do I think Pendle could be a $1 billion plus project? Interesting. Very Interesting. Very interesting. So I'll be I'll be paying attention to that. I got to slide in another column. I'll show you the column over here. So in purchases, I have another column that says, um, did I put it in this one? Oh, this is not the one I put it in. Mm. I have another column that actually shows you the. Uh, it shows you what percentage or not what percentage, what the factor is. Right. 4x, 2x for it to get back to just its all time high. Not where I think it's going to go. No, just to get back to its all time high. So I have that in another in another version of this. Yeah, this is that excellent. Yeah, it's there. I just don't have it on in this particular workbook, but I have it in the one that I'm prepping for sale. Um, let's go through the numbers again. Today, we actually get. Uh, the minutes from the FOMC meeting later today at 2 o'clock. So you'll be hearing everybody talk about that Friday. Tomorrow we're off Friday. I'll, I'll still be on. But Friday is a big day. Friday is a big day because we get the unemployment reports. That's going to be interesting. Fear and Greed Index is still at 50. We're still at that, at that neutral stage. 
all good. Um, fear, uh, the total value locked right now is 117 billion. We're only down a little bit more. That's not bad. Um, looking at where we are right now, right? We're at the lowest point thus far. I want to almost the lowest point. I think the lowest point was right there, which is 59.628. Like I said, Bitcoin had hit in the fifties. So we're already there. We're already, I think we're already at that market correction. Right. But do you see this? This little line right here, that's the 200 day moving average. Not going to say anything else. <laughs> Looking at the big board, this is where we are. Every, almost everything is in the red. But I want you to pay attention to one thing. Look at Tuncoin. Tuncoin is red right now. It is down 2.71%, as it says here. But look at that number. 779. Wow. I told you one of the reasons why I like Tuncoin is because Tuncoin is based on actual transactions, you know, actual commerce transactions. Somebody buying something, somebody, you know, selling something in games, compensation, all kinds of stuff are going on. When I look at Solana, and I, I keep saying it, I like Solana. I have a big bag of Solana. I look at Solana and I'm like, most of your traffic is based on meme coins. Most of their traffic is based on reality. Like, wow, wow, wow. So I'll tell you right now, tongue coin is interesting to me. Doge, SHIB, not Doge as much, because, but SHIB, yes. Um, all of the meme coins are down. So what would I be interested in? Probably uh, with Pepe. Um, I'm interested in FET because I think FET is going to wind up going up. Link, of course. I th to me, that's a great number for Link. So I'm thinking about getting some getting in. And when I say I'm thinking about it, it means I'm going to. Um, Solana. Still think it's a great price to get in. Um, Cardano. I think that's a good price to get in. I bought it 38. Um, it's now at it's now at 40. It's not a big move. It's going to sit there for a while until after the chain fork, until things start to take off. That's when you're going to see it move. That's really when you're going to see it move. So I'm fine with that. XRP, not touching it. Um, Bitcoin Cash, yep, in, very interested. Ethereum interested, obviously, and Bitcoin, obviously interested. If you want to look at it from a numbers perspective, here's where we are. Right. Right now, you're looking at Bitcoin and Ethereum doing 42 and 44.8, you know, percent returns since year to date. Just the other day, they were in the 50s, but yesterday, day before. So that's interesting to see. Um, I'm just going to point this out to you. This is better than the top two. BNB is doing better than the top two. Just saying Solana is doing as good. They're maintaining their space. Right. Better than Bitcoin, but not as good as Ethereum. Here's Tuncoin. Just read those numbers. There's Tuncoin. Killing it. Absolutely killing it. Shiba Inu has been horrible the past 90 days. But year to date, better than the top two. Better than Solana. In terms of return on day one, on 1 1 2024, had you bought all of these coins, you would have done better with Shiba Inu. Polkadot, I think, I think there's, I think there's downside to Polkadot. I think there's serious downside to Polkadot. If you're one of these lucky people and you bought seven days ago, I'd be taking my profits and telling them goodbye. Chainlink is stepping up. They had been down a lot more than this year to date. Chainlink is stepping up. I like Chainlink. I'm going to buy some more Chainlink. Bitcoin Cash, look at that. I'm just saying that, you know, when I tell you to take a look at these things, there's a reason why. There's a reason why. So this tells me, yeah, it's a buying opportunity. Look at those, look at those really yucky numbers. Buying opportunity. All these yucky numbers. To me, that's a buying opportunity. Just saying. So when I do my research based on numbers or what I want to buy, that's what I'm looking at. Now, something that's disappointing to me that I think will be corrected at some point is Polygon. Horrible. 
as much as you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum are up, they are down year to date. But you know what I see? What I see is an opportunity because when the whole market rises, the whole market will rise. Now, when that happens, I can tell you now, I hold a bag of XRP. When the market rises and it hits as close to the pinnacle as possible, I'm, I'm probably going to dump my XRP. I really am. I don't think XRP, and I said it last night, I don't think XRP has a way of maintaining itself. There's no driving force anymore for XRP, in my in my humble opinion. And I'm glad to have that conversation with anybody that wants to talk me out of that way of thinking. I'm glad to. I'd love to hear that there's potential. I just don't see it. I just don't see it. But yeah, we can continue down this list and I can point out different reasons why I would buy certain things. Like I would buy Stellar instead of instead of XRP. Similar tech, low cost, fast, can do the same. Just saying. Hedera, I think, is going to go up based on the news that everybody's hearing that more development is happening on, on Hedera than other other platforms. You're not developing just because just because you, de you know, create a coin that does not mean you're actually developing on a platform which is why Solana is not in that top five. Just saying. Anyway, this is Eddie J on Crypto for GrowMyBag.tv. I hope you like what I'm doing. If you do, tell your friends to, to come and subscribe. And don't forget to listen in and participate in the live that we have weeknights at 8 p.m. It is live and the conversation is livelier. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.